All right, you're welcome back to the series. And I'm here on TV. Our topic we are going to be exploring this morning is the 2022 World Human Day. Yes, that is what we are going to be talking about this morning. Uh, 20, in 2008, rather, United General Assembly announced a day World Humanitarian Day uh, to raise awareness about humanitarian assistance worldwide and to pay to people who risk their lives to provide and to serve who are in, who are in crisis. Today, the rating in the year 2000, and then if you're looking at it now, it's about uh, 13 years on the line. So we have some guests right here with us in the studio who will help us to talk about the year celebration of 2022 uh, Humanitarian Day. We have an engineer to here. Good morning and welcome to the show. Morning, everybody. <laughs> we also have the Fanny Nebunam Development Update. Good morning. And then I'm Roman. Let's start with Tony. Um, start talking about humanitarian and all that. And humanitarian to be. We start with actually. Uh, Meaning, who is considered humanitarian? Definition of uh, we basically define what we call human being, the whole set and the humans. Uh, by God, um, this have been allowed to populate things and all things that to sustain the human existence, right? to sustain it, to uphold it, to make it while human exists. In the old world um, of the where no law, no government, what the issue of survival depends on the strength in you. Line government in board is to the people government help human sustain them. We don't go in the next thing. So all those activities we do to sustain life, encourage life, improve life are all that we can consider as services to improve life, to make life worthwhile. But the question is far. We don't need to or go beyond the shores of this country to cause humanitarian crisis. It is not just war. It is not just um, upheaval, what you can call cleansing, the earthquake, people are dying, unfortunately, or unfortunately, we don't. Have. But when I say unfortunately, I want to look at it from that. There are natural disasters in Africa, occur almost every time. Africans will learn something. Because we are enjoying things with natural problems, we go that we are alone yet. Okay? So, how do we fare in understanding humanity? Let me tell you today, I don't think there's any feeling of humanity in Nigeria. Okay. Because what we do today tend to make me believe we are at war with ourselves. Um, let's go by you. Uh, to over you rather uh, define. Now, I know that there are people who actually dedicated themselves that are only out to about human services. Now, from your own opinion, because he has said that it seems we are failing in that particular aspect, from your own opinion, how are we fed? First, are the, who are the humanitarians? They are people who lay their life for others to live. Those who sacrificially give even when they don't have. 
best definition for us to understand. They are the good of our time. Those who consider others better than themselves, even when the persons they consider better than themselves are not. Then the next is how being at the elected not human stool that did good. A typical example. We had a break here. And somebody paid a life. The Ebola crisis. Such person recognized. Of recognition. Of recognition. Professional. Professional. Who saved the lives of many in this nation. What is the level of recognition? What spot others to join? So me, I grew up being a member of the country organization. The boys brigade to Nigeria road tracks. You see in all of them. These are real patriotic persons. People who are taught to live for the next man. As if they is better than they are the real things in quotes. Who love themselves. Who show in that will love it. We can't be shouting about patriotism. We don't know about patriotism. Today, we are in a society where me, I, me, I, give a little attention, my family. Then I ask, can it take a There is a funny joke that says, it's because three need three, and I make monkey, they throw shakalo. If they leave only one man in a community, how would that man say? The emotions are trained, child and not child to live a communal life. Obi, Mbuki, Obi, Obwe, Obodo, Onna, Nne, Ku, Ibe. That is how true man is. The will live out the strong. How will the strong not lose the weak? How we help nature or sustain nature to get balance. But today we live like bamboo tree. What does it? They have no neighbor. No tree comes close to a bamboo tree. Because he will pick up the water and pour it on himself in the night. Survival of the fittest. Capitalism. Drive of selfishness. And here we are. Coming back to you, Tony. I'm a me when I say no, Okoka ba Mado Jekulu one year or Koya Nazo. Just like if I rightly mentioned that before now, we used to have that uh, sense of you know uh, having that kind of human feeling for each other, living communally and helping each other. But what what we are experiencing right now is a different thing altogether. Now the question is, how did we get to this point? Failure of the government. Failure of the government. Let me give you an instance. Somebody will come into a government office elected to serve four years. Probably he served four years or at most eight years. They have garnered, garnered the nation's resources for themselves. How can you imagine that somebody having put just four, eight years at, at most in office? They have put up structure that do what? Give them pension. If I even call it gratuity. That even those who have put that five years have not been given. Eight years. You're paying yourself pension. You are giving yourself the choices building in the country. The system has, in fact, the people that should rule this country to a better place has taken leave of the paddle and the ship is just roaring anyhow so the point is this look let me there's a statement that says the best way to assess a society is not how you treat the mighty but what is the condition of the weak how do you treat the weak it is the, that is the area you need to assess a country how do we treat the weak among us the poor people 
People, somebody have put him some years in service for eight, uh, 35 years, 60 years. You have not deemed it necessary to pay the person his gratuity. Yet you are a living in affluence. And we, people will continue to clap for that person. Another way is not just that. There is what you call terrorism of the poor. You know the poor terrorizes the society too. <laughs> Go to the street and see what is happening there. Those are the, also what you consider in humanity. How do you do things with reference to the other person? Other road users? How do you consider them? In our health institutions today, people have been made to die because they didn't, were not able to pay what they call the deposit. When we know that the basic principle of uh, health, of what I can call medical service, is to do what? To sustain life. You see pregnant women dying waiting to be attended to. You see accident victims dying because they did not pay deposit. You go to offices, almost all offices, like I say before. It's like we are at war with ourselves. How do we get to this place? The failure of the control. There is an institution we call government. Mm. And that institution was put together by man for the welfare of man. Remove government and look at what is going to happen. The survival of the fetus. We left that stage and come to a place where we say we put people to manage our commonwealth. To use our commonwealth to sustain others, the weak, the, the rich. Today, the only people that are considered fit to be taken care of are the mighty. So, where do we come? How do we come to this place? We have failed ourselves also. Because we put these people we call government. Government is everybody. We are all part of government. So we have also failed ourselves. It is now cyclic. There is fight today. Fight. Look at, go, go in, just leave this euphoria of believing all is well. Take a look at what is putting pressure on people. Strokes. People are dying of high blood pressure. Who is putting those pressure? People around us. Environment is so heated up, so pressurized that we are living in a pressure cooker. So, if things go wrong in a society, who put it right? The leaders. Unfortunately, we seem to be putting people who are not just like Onyisi, we are putting in this, this. Greedy people. Greedy society. You look at if you put it side by side with what you can get in other countries. You see, where are we? We are going backward, not even forward. So we got to where we are today because we have put in people who are insensitive to the plight of the people. We uh, do you also share in a sentiment that the government actually share? Uh, in fact, we have to blame them. Some, some are not all. Number okay. One, I strongly believe that our failure started from the family. Family. Yes. Okay. That is the nucleus of life. Some of us, if we are not gagged, may have been worse than what we are today. In the sense that growing up, we are meant to understand by our that look, one omone principle of communalism, principle of serving people. Hence, we were pushed, the word in quote, pushed, because as a growing child, your best option has always been to go and play. But we were tell us, oh no, join this voluntary organization, join this, join this, join that, tailoring your tomorrow. Today, how many parents encourage their children to join voluntary organizations where patriotism is taught, practiced, and exhibited? Where is Boys Brigade? Where is Nigeria Red Cross? Where is Girls Brigade? Where is Boy Scout? Boy Scout. Where is Man of War? And the rest of them. The highest you can see now is Rotary Club and Rotary Club. Ah, fine, good, beautiful. But it's harvesting at the secondary level, just like Nigeria education, where 
People talk about funding education when it's only about university. Mm. Who funds the primary and the secondary school? The building block of the academic life of any person. Go to our primary and secondary schools. When somebody is shouting, pay me this amount, what about you? are a painter, as far as I'm concerned, in the building of education. The builders are the primary school teachers and the secondary school teachers. Who even tell you how to hold by rule? How to craft A before you start making sentence? We've left the building block, the family. Today, what do we marry for? In the olden days, you marry is a mm -hmm. Today, we marry for affluence, friendship, political reasons, economic reasons. No more even for procreation. Otherwise, we shouldn't be. We are hearing of lesb lesbianism and uh, whatever. <laughs> Remember the word. Now, what do we see? The family failed completely. Parents should sit and ask themselves questions, myself inclusive. What are we bequeathing on our children? If from one if from one My brother, these fingers are not equal. Some are made rich late, some early. On your one are rich and also on your blue chills or bubbles or what cut or son or one web off or Geneva. We should learn to remove some pressure off us. We should, you, you look, look at the issue of your boy. Since he ended, we started selling land because the poor will survive. The weak will find a way. Nobody wants to be trampled upon. That's the simple truth. Now, if he that is done need fear no fall, the next thing we do is to start kicking people to fall and join him. Until the family recognize the essence first of marriage, the essence of the getting children, the essence of getting a society. For you to get a better society, you must invest in that society from the day the child is born. Otherwise, when he gets to wherever he exhibits what he has, you can't give what you don't have. You don't build on nothing and expect it to stand. These are normal axioms. Then, what about leadership at home? The father and the mother. Am I aware? How are we doing it? This is your and this is your body. It's easy to point the man at the top. <laughs> but the man at the top didn't get there by miracle. We are all responsible. No society gets a leadership that is better than what the society has. That's my belief. Because the leader is coming from amongst the pool. He's first amongst equal. Primus inter pares. He's first amongst equal. So it's the society that generates, produce their leaders and the leadership they get. So if the society is not tenured, prepared, nurtured, you know, given ideologies of existence, what existence is all about. You know, we just live and exist. What it's upstairs. Education is very good. But let us understand there are formal and informal education. There are lots we don't learn from school or in school. Even those we learn in school, I've never seen any school that teaches people how to face an interview. We still have finishing school. So we discover that we have to get back, sit back, and ask ourselves questions. Because if you don't know, he who failed to plan has already planned to fail. So. We must know what we want and what we want tomorrow and plan it today. If we don't plan it today, then whatever tomorrow. And let us know that life and existence will never give you what you want. He gives you what him or her, what he wants to. In fact, life continually will throw challenges at you. It's your ability to do what? To navigate, adapt. And for you to adapt, you must be trained to adapt. Patriotism. Arise or come petrolize Nigeria Colombia. I place to Nigeria my country. All right. <laughs> my brother. All right. Actually, let's uh, let's also look at uh, uh, proliferation of NGOs. We know that there are a lot of NGOs that uh, uh, come up with the idea of helping people and uh, you know um, indulging in humanitarian services. But we see and we notice that some of them these days that they just want to enrich their pockets. <laughs> you know. So that would be also a challenge. My brother here talked about the family. 
I agree with him totally. Okay? I remember those days when we were small. Um, you see, a young man, mostly the most senior, the parents will do everything to raise the guy to go to school because actually I go out. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not that the, young, the younger ones may. The parents will tell you, hey, just like you talk about your boy. Lego, you need the Lego. Send the uncle Bele. Okay? Or Jay Mwafia. From there, he got Batavia Naka. By the time they started making some money from Afia on Azu, attention is shifted to him. That elderly, elder brother that went to school, of course, I got out school in Chobanol. No money yet. You don't come to a situation where if the young one is not there, nothing is said, nothing is discussed. They shift respect and attention to Nkobele. Neglecting the big one, the elder one. That's the starting point of crisis in the family. Okay? But I want to tell you one thing. Like I, I said before, it has come to what you can call cyclic effect. That you won't be able to single out where the problem now is. Because what is playing in the family also is the effect of what is happening in the larger society. When the parents are not having enough to deal with their, personal, their family challenges, they start looking for money. They start paying attention on how to raise the money. But the pressure is coming from this mega society that makes the man or the woman not to think correctly anymore. You talk about humanitarian uh, civil society or NGO, non-governmental organizations, this and that. It's not the same thing. What we have today is NGIs, people that carry portfolio, portfolio NGOs, in order to do what? To survive. It's still the effect of the pressure in the environment. I'm, at times I sympathize with young men, especially young men, who are facing this life the way it is now today. How much can a young man do to make money to even build a house today? To even own a land. If you go to the village, there is war. Even the communal land are being disputed. So you may not even have share in the family. So the point is that most of these things you talk about are the effect. Proliferation of non-governmental organizations, civil society organizations, is that people sometimes, people, sometimes people join, in fact of recent I've seen people joining civil society group simply because they want to get something doing. They have grown around, the school did not even turn them out to be scaled. Like my brother said, they are not modeled properly to even survive with whatever they came out from school with. Some of them, the society has made it that it is garbage in, garbage out. Some even paid to have exam written for them. So they don't even come out with that, that thing you call certificate. It's not even the certificate in the head. Certificate on paper. So even if he has to apply for a job, he cannot even write application. It's not his fault. It's still the fault of the institution that brings him out. So all these things play to the point that we have gotten a society that is empty. That is what I call human emptiness. That we don't have much to impart. It is what you have that you give. So when you don't have anything, you don't give anything. So even if you are employed, some may even lose their job because they are not performing. So what we have today is, both in civil society, in everywhere, are people trying to survive, finding a way to live. And then the challenges are there. I was telling somebody that they were talking about groups, organizations, this. So that organizations we are going into, women are meeting, women meeting, this, we continue to put pressure also on you. Pay this, pay this levy, pay this, contribute this, contribute that. You don't even generate enough money to sustain your life. You are being asked to pay 1,000 naira monthly dues there. Pay the pressure continues to pile on you that to the extent that people are dying today, we don't know how many people that have left. So provision of uh, NGOs and society is also a fallout of a faulty system. 
And this faulty system is affecting almost everybody. Why I took it to the government is that I, had a, I have a question I said. When things have gone wrong, who solves it? Some people volunteered to be the solution to the societal problem. It is because I believe I know what I am going to do when I get there to help solve this problem. That's why I said vote for me. That man on the street did not say vote for me to be on the street. To be a, 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 a kada rider or keke rider. I have said I want to serve. Now when you have not been put in a place to take this ship to a, a destination, you abandon the ship. You abandon the rudder. And continue to think about yourself only. Is that why you, you, you gathered there? That's why I mentioned, like I told you, we are the government. Everybody. We are also having our own fault in putting those people with our government. But if you now go to ask question, why do you collect 5,000 naira to vote for somebody? That person will tell you, I want to eat. After all, if I put him there, he may not open the door again for me. So give me money. Which we said is wrong. All these things are the things we put in place to make this society unlivable. To attack our humanity and make the human essence in us Leave us. Thank Hello, you. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. You're connected. Yes, tell us your name and your location. Good morning. I'm calling from Morocco. Okay. All right, go ahead. So much. Thank you so much for your contribution. All right, uh, let's go. And now the theme for this year is it takes a village. Now, how how do we use this? Because we are talking about uh, people not having that compassionate spirit again, and then uh, not also um, you know uh, regarding those people that are all, already into humanitarian services. So, how do we use this year's theme to redefine and change the narrative? If you don't know the task ahead of you, you may be ill prepared to face the task. First, um, glorification of NGOs, no. Impact done by the NGOs, zero. They are not even not enough. Because there are areas not yet covered. But the issue is, in the day, the man about the big kill you. In Ken Werisi, I don't know. In Ken Werisi. Like my friend said yesterday night when we were discussing, he said, You don't, you are not voted to become a comrade. You get comradeship by struggle. You know, first, we must first tell ourselves the truth. And what is the truth? I have failed. Stop pointing at the next man. Because if I recognize that I am part and parcel of the crisis, then I should also recognize that I can bring solution to the problem. You see, the man up there, I do say all the time, <laughs> has a ladder upon which he climbed. Are there a type of wickedness in a chichi? More father, more bishop, more pope. A wicked man is a wicked man irrespective of where he finds himself. And what makes one wicked is the spirit inherent in the man. And what constitutes the spirit inherent in the man is environmental, societal, and spiritual. In all of this, when somebody is wrongly molded from the origin, it's just like 
a girl child that was breeded from a broken home. It become practically impossible not, not in quotes, to have a broken marriage. What do we need to do? First, we must all recognize we are responsible. We must call ourselves, advise ourselves, be done on women. The positive change, not just change, starts with me. What do I contribute to society? What am I giving the society? Not actually waiting for what the society will give to you. Because society will only give you what it gives back, what it gives to him. If we fail to produce a better tomorrow, we obviously have planned to have a bad tomorrow. It's just very simple. Very, very simple. Put in, you get something. Don't put in, don't get. So we must first as a people begin to recognize and advise ourselves this shifting of blame and passing of ball should stop. We cannot score goal if we don't become a team. And it's only a team that can score a goal. Okay. Um, let's uh, get to hear people's opinion concerning what we are discussing today, the 2022 World Humanitarian Day. We actually interviewed some people, and here is what they have to say. Uh, the best way to immortalize them is for people who are left behind and who also benefited from their humanitarian gestures to continue from where they stopped so that the entire humanity will benefit from the same thing that the person that died did. If you say you have to mold a something or whatever, it may not actually touch the lives of people that needed help at that moment. So the best way to immortalize those people is for the people that we have been left behind to continue the good works that they what that they left behind. Mention their names and what they have done. And probably if there is a hall, if we have a hall of whatever, a hall of fame or whatever they call it, eh, we put their pictures there, give a little biography of their life and exactly what they did to make humanity a better place. From that way, people will know that mm, you can do a greater good by sacrificing, sacrificing yourself to render for the public good. All these writers, novelists, poets, they can write words, notes, then people can read their biographies and the rest. From there, they will not know why they are being mortalized. It's by giving them special recognitions. Um, just like, uh, um, let me use Let's take, for instance, we have uh, our Dora Kunyili Women Development Centre. So, um, attributing such establishments to people like that could be a good strategy to start with. People will see the importance of being humanitarian, the importance of helping others as well, that your efforts are not being in vain. He understands. Okay, so well, people see that. Uh, let's take, for instance, many times you hear from people telling you that uh, a country like Nigeria is not worth dying of. We understand because after um, taking, um, engaging yourself in such sacrifices, nobody recognizes you. You understand. But when people have been recognized, such as using, uh, using um, their names set up and establishments, so people get to understand as well that at least the efforts are not being in vain. Uh, Laura Akunyele, she was a great woman. Uh, she paid, uh, she, 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 she put in her best to you know, read the country of fake drugs and of course she was persecuted people say all sorts of things against her but she stood her ground she believed in good nigeria and then making the society safe for the common man this is geared towards reminding people of our history what has happened in the past and it goes a long way in making people understand that these and these other one happened we have true picture of what happened before maybe before you were born or something that happened even different places when maybe when you were still alive and you couldn't have first-hand information about those things. All right, you're welcome back to the show. Um, you all heard what the people have to say about what we are talking today. It's basically about immortalizing those people that have actually uh, laid down their life 
uh, rendering services to people in crisis. And I know we've talked about Adedevo, the Ebola woman. We've talked about it earlier. But then uh, the question is now, how best can we actually mobilize that? Because if I made mention that nobody... Ha uh, no, in fact, it seems that we've forgotten her forgotten and what she did for this country. So how best can we do that? To me, the best way to immortalize somebody is Melo Mia Candendo. Remembering a dead man is not bad. Immortalizing a dead person is good. But if that person is immortalized when he is in flesh and blood, it drives joy in the person. Two, people will actually see it do me see, touch and feel. This issue of immortalizing people when they are gone, well, fine, but I think the best we do is to mortalize when they are alive. Where is Professor Humphrey Wilson today? And funny enough, like I do say, I don't think we still have philosophers. We may have, but, you know, these are men who saw tomorrow. Where are our musicians who actually we are telling us this only a question of our time. Freedom is now or never. We either win it or lose it forever. The magic fashion. The rain is coming. They check up at us. Milia onelu, milia game maybe famoso. It's not this noise we make here now. I know I got a look upon Afifian Megalism. Do we remember people when they are alive? Do we celebrate them when they are alive? And even goes down to how we do our cultural burials. What are we doing? Celebrate these persons when they are alive. And people will come to ask them questions. How did you achieve? How did you attain? Not when they are gone with the stories, with the struggles. And I will tell you, you can attain without sleepless nights and burnt fingers. You must burn your fingers. You cannot get anything new except you make mistakes and it's the mistakes that bring something new so that these people will teach us how what drive them because when they are gone funny enough in africa we don't document but if it's a society that documents history that produce biography then we can say okay i pick the biography and read but when the persons are alive, if we celebrate them, they'll be able to talk, speak, and then build disciples and mentors. A dead man cannot be disciples and mentors. But if we celebrate them when they are alive, they become idols in existence and therefore create worshippers, create mentors, redevelop and reproduce themselves. Not when they are gone. So I strongly believe we start celebrating people when they leave. All right. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Your name and your location? Chief Talk and Do, calling from Ghana. All right, Chief Talk and Do, go ahead. You could hear from there, but all the North and Canada will be there and not the one. But we could hear the state side to the state of the city. Because I told you, we're not going to be here. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Mm. Now, uh, what he said is true, that it's, it's better we honor the people where they are alive. But what about the people that died in the course of their duties? Like Adedovo, like the, the, uh, some of the people in the military <laughs> that were fighting and all that. How do we honor them at the end of the day? Okay. Because they are The only way to honor them and to immortalize them, because when you talk about immortalization, it means to make to put something that will always be remembered 
in name or in favor of somebody or something to make it immortal mm -hmm. okay so that one one total to oh yeah but immortalizing people our t today we name a lot of uh government properties government programs just projects. like we, we can see in, in, on the tv said now a yeah. road uh, named is this an edifice? Amelio Adedovo Way. Is this an edifice? Is this a not, national? Is it a is national it not, monument? So we should stop deceiving what, ourselves. What has the federal government done to immortalize this lady? Is it difficult to name one medical institution? After federal her. medical institution after her? Is it is it impossible? Is it impossible to name one university of medical science after her? To so that. Our children yet unborn, we remember her. That's the best way to do it. You see, my brother talk about um, building houses when somebody has died. In families today, that is what we have. Somebody can we build a tiny and because I don't know the possible person can just 24 hours put me down. Very go. Don't even one of my friend, Doctor Kelly, even said, don't leave even any mark on my dead, on my grave. So. When somebody dies, you keep the person in the street for three months, four months, five months to build a house. When he lived, or he or she lived in a, in a, in a thatch, he, he might have died of hunger. Then we gather from all over the world to bury that person. When the person suffered and died. Just like I mentioned the issue of people who are dying today because their gratuity have not been paid. I will not murder us. Because it is by our, somebody may be in the dead bed, so they're suffering, waiting for the money to pay so that it will be treated. And you keep that money and you go somewhere and they're enjoying. Is it not an attack on humanity? So what I am saying is that there are so many ways you can immortalize somebody that have died. But like my brother said, it is good. Don't come to my death bed to say you love me. If you cannot say it when I'm alive, don't give me, bring lavish food while I'm lying on stage. When you have not even fed me when I'm alive. So what we have, I told you something, there is what I can call systemic failure in our society today. Dangerous trend that if left unchecked in the next decade, Two, three, four decades to come, people may start eating themselves on the street because of lack of humanity in our body way of life, in our body languages. In every our interaction with ourselves today, we are at war. I said it originally. If you think I'm lying, go and sit down and analyze yourself. Your landlord is at war with you. Power supply. There's no water. Even grow for you to even ply your vehicle. It is even now a, a, a very big thing for a road to be constructed properly. Tension is in you. You cannot even relax and have a peace of mind in our society today. The generator will be running 24 hours and you, are, you don't know the pressure you are, going, you are under with those generators around. Just cause them to be put down. Even generator is at war with us. We call them into being. So there is a lot of things that makes humanity take flight. We need to look at what we do. How do we get this thing done? In some countries, they use revolution. Which nobody will call for. Nobody in his side sense of mind will call for a revolution. But it's a revolution that has put some countries where they are today in the better pedestrian. But it's not a good thing to advise for. Now, outside that, because that is the action from the grassroots, from the underground, that is from the gra uh, uh, ground, to solve the mess. Outside that one, the other one is to put good leaders, which I said we are all part of the problem. Very soon, we start buying votes, selling votes, People that we say it's enough is enough. Let us put the, do the right thing. We pick, I call it uh, politics of stakeholders. That's what we have today. 
politics of stakeholders. Stakeholders will now sit somewhere and decide who will be. They will now select the worst of the society and ask us to pick from the, among those worst, the worst of the worst. In what they call the uh, primaries. This thing has gotten so interwoven that solving it, I don't know. I'm not saying she wants this one time. All right. If I, I, I be doing what I I be doing what I be doing what I know. You know, uh, that's, that's actually one of the main reasons I did not here this morning. But then, and then the United Nations, the China, Funa, things like this will happen. Like it will take them to even remind us that we need to celebrate these heroes, yes, these volunteers, it takes them to and all that. Us. So, how do we come in? The church, the government, every one of us in the society. First. I, I, I wish not to thank the United Nations because it takes from existence to 2019 to remember they are volunteers. How painful. 2009. 2009. How painful. Well, the first question we start asking ourselves what should I be remembered for? In fact, right here, I think what was my grandfather remembered for? What was my, my late father remembered for? What should I be remembered for? That is a question everybody should ask himself. Wherever you are, what problem do you solve? What do you add to life and existence? We must remove this idea and this thinking of taking, taking, taking. My brother, he being a CA well, in 18 have we ever asked ourselves these questions? Are we putting in? What do we put in? You just go to take. Go and take. Go and take. Just like the way we run our government, the way we run our lives. Taking, taking, taking. What do you take, bring in? Look, nature has told us, Lake Chad Basin is drying. Where would we get fish? Nature has told us that if you don't bring in, you continuously take out that we come to an extinction. Kedo mpa inebo. What will I be remembered for? What legacy do I leave behind? Then it comes back to the academias. Please, please and please. I'm a member of the academia. We should ask ourselves question. What philosophy do we build in people? What ideologies do we regenerate? Community leaders, I am a member. What do we do? How do we how do we mentor society? What are you putting on ground? Who are you reproducing? Who are you mentoring? What are you teaching people? What is your life replicating? The Christian uh, 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 leaders, I am one. What are we really doing? Christ came and taught us something. Uh, Muhammad came and taught us something. What are we teaching? Okay, if you can't teach, replicate what they have taught you. Replicate it. Christ preached love, understanding, communal life. Hence, he was calling people, 12 disciples, you come, you come. At the end, he sent them out, go and get more. Who are you getting? What are you putting in? The community leaders, don't worry, don't this is reality. I have seen it happen. I don't want to make mention of the place where people are selling their grandfather's grave, the land upon which their grandfather exists. It's even with us here, very close by. I don't want to... But ask yourself. Haba. Political leaders. Well, good readers to bad rubbish. Good readers to bad rubbish. Form for you, but don't worry. A disease will come. It will take away the entire fund. If you feel the next man need not to exist, don't, no problem. You will find cook. You will find cleaner. Eh? And then, look at how miserable some of our so-called leaders are dying. How miserable. How miserable. Some on which here for years. All right. Some yeah. folded like clothes. Some, you know, nature has a way. Nature will deal with you the way you dealt with nature. Very simple. Just like the climate change we are seeing today. 
for ban or go or no we get a compense recompense proper recompense according to what we put in it will come back to us good measure shake it together pressed and running over okay. all right quickly uh, just before we go uh, tony let's uh, talk about the role of the parents have to play because uh, if we don't teach the younger ones on the need for them to have uh, a compassionate heart and all that they won't even know what to do <laughs> who are these parents who are these parents you don't have is it these parents that we that we are seeing today evolving from this generation that we are having around us do you know that you don't go to school to be a parent do you know nobody in fact, the only thing you get to be a parent is the one you get from the home. Just like he said. That's if the home exists. If that is, I'm not coming there now because it is that, that parent, that parent is the home now. Is it not the home? Do you know what is, why the mess we are having today is where it is today? Because there is a time when we saw our family, our parenting, your parenting being in a in, in fact going in the wrong direction people we are shouting nobody wanted to listen or your parents how many of our parents today even know what's happening in their homes to raise new future parents we in the, in the morning by 7 30 6 o'clock we are in the market we are out there on the road do you know car business? The children are on the street, making noise and playing anyhow. Nobody is guiding them. Tomorrow they will parents. Right. I said somebody must call the shot and bring this. There are social what we call uh, social orientation offices orientation to reorientate our people, ourselves. What is happening? Let's use that office. So that there are people, so that people that actually have still have something upstairs can gather there and do what? Orientate our people. All right. Thank you. Well, on that note, we want to say a very big thank you to both of you for joining us this morning. Engineer Tony and Ibu, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Shedeman. And, and also you, Ifani Ogune Wunam. Thank you so much <laughs> for joining us on the show this morning. <laughs> All right, <laughs> all right. Let's end, let's end the show this morning with a, a quote from Nelson Mandela. It is in our hands to make a better world for all of us to live in. Thank you so much for joining us on the show this morning. My name is Chidima Orangwa. See you tomorrow. Bye.